Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Geography. In today's lesson, we will be learning about a theme one topic. Extreme weather. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Firstly, what is a tropical cyclone? A tropical cyclone is a very large, spinning storm that forms in the tropics. Tropical cyclones have winds and torrential rain, and usually affect small islands and coastal regions. What are the characteristics of tropical cyclones? Tropical cyclones are characterized by their low pressure, intense weather, and spinning structure. Warm air rises and creates an updraft during the formation of a tropical cyclone causing an area of low pressure in form. The area inside a tropical cyclone is often as low as 950 millibars. The pressure on Earth is usually 1013 millibars. The center of the storm, called the eye, can be 15% lower pressure than areas outside of the storm. Tropical cyclones are characterized by thunderstorms, strong winds, and intense rainfall. The area surrounding the center, called the eye wall contains the strongest winds, thunder and lightning, and torrential rain. Lane very intense storms, sustained winds can reach 240 km per hour or around 150 miles, and gusts can exceed 320 km. Tropical cyclones rotate due to the spin of the Earth. Lane the southern hemisphere, the storms spin clockwise, in the northern hemisphere they spin anticlockwise. What is the structure of a tropical cyclone? There are complicated processes going on inside a tropical cyclone. Here is a cross section of one. Imagine if you cut a tropical cyclone in half and looked in the middle. Warm air fans outwards when it reaches the top. Colder, dry air sinks down the eye. This creates a calm, cloudless condition. It is around 30 miles wide. Warm air rising and rotating around the edge within the eye wall. This causes heavy rain and strong winds. Multiple banks of clouds created by moist, warm rising air. These cause thunderstorms and heavy rain. What does the global distribution of tropical cyclones look like? Tropical cyclones are named different things in different regions. 1. Hurricane. In the USA, Latin America, and the Caribbean. They usually form mid-July to September. 2. Cyclone. Australia, Oceania, and Madagascar. They usually form January to April. The summer to autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. 3. Typhoon. India, Japan, and the Philippines. These usually form from July to October. Where do tropical cyclones develop? Tropical cyclones need very specific conditions to form, meaning they will only form in certain areas. Tropical cyclones form between 5 to 15 degrees north or south of the equator, in warm oceans. The location that a tropical cyclone forms in is known as its source area. They need many things to form. 1. Temperature The ocean temperatures must be around 26 to 27 degrees Celsius and at least 50 meters deep. Warm water provides the storm with energy. This is why storms form during late summer when the ocean has a time to heat up. 2. Air pressure This must be in areas of unstable air pressure. Usually where areas of high pressure and low pressure meet, so that warm air rises more readily and clouds can form. This air must also be humid for cloud formation. Warm air rises because it is less dense than cold air. 3. Wind shear Winds must be present for the swirling motion to form, but not too strong or the storm system will be ripped apart in the early stages. 4. Rotation Tropical cyclones only form around the equator, between 5 to 15 degrees on either side of the equator, but tropical cyclones will not form on the equator. The Coriolis effect is the effect of the Earth's rotation on weather events. The storm spins because the Earth is spinning. 
but there is no Coriolis effect at the equator, hence why these storms will only form a certain distance away from it. Tropical cyclones follow certain pathways that are driven by global wind circulation. These pathways are known as the cyclone's track. It is possible to follow the track of a tropical cyclone using satellite imagery, as the storms are so large they can be seen from space. Tropical Cyclone Formation 1. Warm, moist air rises, leaving an area of low pressure below. This causes warm air from the surroundings to move into this low pressure area and rise. Overall, warm air is constantly rising and accumulating in the atmosphere. 2. When the warm air rises, it eventually cools. This moist air will then condense and form large thunderstorm clouds. 3. The whole system is spinning due to the Coriolis effect. In the southern hemisphere, the storms spin clockwise. In the northern hemisphere, anticlockwise. 4. The constant additions of energy from the warm air causes the storm to spin faster and generate higher wind speeds. At 75 miles per hour, the storm can be classed as a category 1 tropical cyclone. 5. The storm develops an eye in the center. This is an area of extremely low pressure where cool, dry air descends. The weather within the eye is relatively calm and cloud-free. Surrounding the eye is the eye wall, the most intense and powerful area of the storm. Warm, moist air rapidly rises here, with extremely high winds and torrential rain. 6. When the tropical cyclone reaches a coast, the low pressure and high winds will cause a large amount of seawater to be pushed onto the coast, which is called a storm surge. When the storm reaches land, it no longer has a supply of energy, the warm, moist air from the sea, and the eye eventually collapses and the storm dissipates. Heavy rain can persist for days. Tropical cyclones can be very damaging to people, the environment, and the economy. The physical hazards that tropical cyclones create have impacts. These hazards include 1. High winds strong enough to lift roofs and bring down infrastructure, which can be very dangerous if they hit someone. 2. Intense rainfall. Over 100 centimeters of rain can fall in a single storm event. This is more than the UK's annual rainfall. 3. Storm surges when the storm passes over the coast, it picks up a lot of water and causes an abnormally high tide called a storm surge. These can be anywhere from a couple of feet to tens of feet high. 4. Coastal flooding. Storm surges cause flooding on the coast, which can damage coastal infrastructure and contaminate near freshwater. 5. Landslides. A large amount of rainfall, as well as coastal flooding, can oversaturate the ground and trigger landslides. How vulnerable are countries to tropical cyclones? Some countries are more vulnerable to tropical cyclones than others due to both physical and socioeconomic reasons. This means the risk the tropical cyclone poses to life and property in a vulnerable country is greater, and there's a higher likelihood of serious damage. Different factors influence a population's vulnerability. A list of the effects and vulnerabilities can be found in the link in the description below. How about tropical cyclone management? Countries can reduce the impacts of tropical cyclones by ensuring they are prepared for the event, and respond to the cyclone effectively when it does hit. This can be done in different ways. Ensuring the cyclone is monitored using satellites and forecasting technology. Having warming systems and evacuation strategies in place for the population. Building physical defenses to ensure the population is protected. What about weather forecasting and satellite technology? As tropical cyclones form away from land, it is possible to track cloud formations and movements using satellite technology. Scientists monitor source areas to see if one is on the way. Also, it is possible to monitor the track a tropical cyclone is taking, to see if there is potential for the tropical cyclone to make landfall. It is possible to predict the track a tropical cyclone is going to take as well as its intensity up to days in advance. The population can be informed of the estimated time that the tropical cyclone will hit them and can take action accordingly. These predictions become more reliable as the storm gets closer. For example, here is a typical predicted forecast of a tropical cyclone. The forecast to the left was made a day earlier than the forecast to the right. 
Notice how the forecast changes as the tropical cyclone gets closer. It is also possible to predict how high a storm surge will be by analyzing the intensity of a storm, which is important for making decisions regarding who is at risk and needs to be evacuated. What are some warning and evacuation strategies? Places that are frequently at risk of tropical cyclones usually have plans in place to ensure the population is safe. These plans include Evacuation routes and safety protocols Countries create evacuation routes and develop warning systems to ensure the population is prepared for a storm and will be alerted when one is coming. Warnings are often broadcast on different forms of media, things like radio, television, and social media, to ensure they are reached by as many people as possible. Raising awareness If the community is aware of the risk they face from tropical cyclones, they can lower their risk by getting prepared. This can include sorting important supplies, organizing documents, and becoming aware of their local shelter. Some countries have very rural communities that do not have any means of communication, making these communities vulnerable. To reduce their vulnerability, countries like Bangladesh are training people to go into these rural communities and warn them of an incoming storm. How about physical defenses? Building an infrastructure design can help to protect people and property from the effects of tropical cyclones. For example, sea walls can be built on coastlines to block storm surges. Storm drains can be constructed to divert water after high levels of rainfall to reduce the risk of flooding. Power lines, doors, windows, and transformers can be reinforced to be resistant to high winds. Houses can be built on higher ground or even on stilts to reduce flooding risk. This house is an example of a hurricane-proof home. It is built on stilts to ensure it is high up and resistant to flooding from storm surges. The building is made out of concrete which is resistant to very strong winds. Windows and doors can also be reinforced to be resistant to heavy winds, and resistant to breaking if they are hit with flying debris. Having many tropical cyclone shelters spread across vulnerable areas is also important, as this means people have a safe place to shelter, away from the effects of the tropical cyclone. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.